got two questions. Um, the first being, where does wisdom start? The answer is really simple. It starts with the fear of God. Question two is, what does a wise man do? A wise man obeys God's commandments out of love. So I'm going to ask this, and I want you to kind of answer it in your head. What does a wise man, where does wisdom start? It starts with fear of God. The second question being, what does a wise man do? Obeys God's commands out of love. So where does wisdom start? Starts with fear of God. What does a wise man do? Obeys God's commandments out of love. All right. So, and I'll be checking in with you over the course of the next couple of minutes, just to kind of make sure those two statements penetrate. Okay. So our scripture, uh, the Lord appeared to a man one night in a dream and said, ask for whatever you want me to give you. The man answered, you have shown great kindness to your servant, my father, David, because he was faithful to you and religious and upright in heart. You have continued this great kindness to him and have given him a son to sit on his throne this very day. Now, Lord, my God, you have made me made your servant king in place of my father, David. But I am only a little child and do not know how to carry out my duties. Your servant is here among the people you have chosen, a great people, too numerous to count or number. So give your servant a discerning heart to govern your people and to distinguish them, distinguish between right and wrong. For who is able to govern this great people of yours? The Lord was pleased that he had asked for this. So God said to him, since you have asked for this and not for long life or wealth for yourself, nor have asked for the death of your enemies, but for discernment and administering justice, I will do what you have asked. I will give you a wise and discerning heart so that you will never have been. So there will never have been anyone like you, nor Will there ever be? In other words, he made him a one of a kind. What I just read was first Kings five through 12. This was a conversation between God and Solomon. Solomon is renowned for his wisdom and wealth. He wrote the books of Proverbs, Ecclesiastes and Song of Solomon. Now, he also had 700 wives and 300 concubines despite this multitude of women, he had an epic relationship with the Queen of Sheba. In this passage, however, God promised to make him wise beyond any man ever. So even the wisest men succumbed to the wiles of women. Solomon, the wisest man ever, wrote Proverbs 2 and 2. Making your ear, make your ear attentive to wisdom and by turning your heart to understanding. Indeed, if you call out for discernment, raise your voice for understanding. If you seek it like silver and search for it like hidden treasure, then you will understand how to fear the Lord. You will discover knowledge about God. For the Lord gives wisdom. From his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. So the wisest man in history tells us where wisdom comes from. Where does wisdom start? with the fear of God. William Jennings Bryan, a famous in American history, was a U.S. Congressman, three-time Democratic presidential nominee and Secretary of State. Okay. He's probably best, memorized, best remembered for the famous Scopes Monkey Trial in 1925, which litigated whether evolution should be taught in schools. This man's far-reaching influence has been attributed to his wisdom. Perhaps the secret to his wisdom was his acceptance of advice given to him by his father. Just before William left for college, his father, who was a preacher, challenged him to read through the book of Proverbs once a month for a year. The young man decided to do such during his freshman year, and years later, he looked back at his father's request as one of the most important factors in his life. So what is wisdom? What exactly is wisdom? Many equate wisdom with knowledge. However, knowledge is simply the accumulation of facts. But wisdom 
is what God will bless you with in order for us to glorify him with the knowledge we have of him. Wisdom is being able to see things as God does and acting as he would. The goal of learning should be to better know how know God and out of knowledge of him, love him, worship him. Note, knowledge of God without worship is cold and empty. Worship without knowledge of God is idolatry. God wants us to know him and to grow to be like him and to love him. The book of Proverbs written by Solomon stands out to me amongst many books in the Bible because it is explicitly instructional. It is meant to be more like a, a guide than any other book that we read. Solomon gives us insight into God's view in a practical, everyday, situational manner. In Proverbs, he states, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. I'm going to repeat that. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Fools despise wisdom and instruction. When we, hear, when we fear the Lord, which is the most basic form of understanding, God can then begin to provide us with wisdom through Jesus, whom the Bible says is wisdom itself. 1 John 2, 4 through 6 echoes this notion. It tells us that we know the Lord, we reflect the Lord. So where does wisdom start? It starts with the fear of God. What does a wise man do? Obey God's commands out of love. There are 60 references to the wise in Proverbs. And just here are just a few, not 60, but just a few. The first, fear God. For the love the, for the, love the Lord gives hmm, for the Lord gives wisdom. From his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. He holds success in store for the upright. He is a shield to those who walk. He is a shield to those whose walk is blameless. Proverbs 2, 6 through 7. Delight in wisdom. A fool finds pleasure in wicked schemes, but a person of understanding delights in wisdom. In other words, don't delight in stupidity. Embrace wisdom. Humility. When pride comes, then comes disgrace. But with humility comes wisdom. Proverbs 11, 2. So in other words, don't think too highly of yourself. By serving others as Jesus did, you will accumulate true wisdom. Choose companions carefully. Walk with the wise and become wise. For a companion of fools suffers harm. In other words, birds of a feather flock together. Stupid people hang out with stupid people. If you, if you hang out with foolish, you will end up in harm's way. Five, be a blessing to others. A man who loves wisdom brings joy to his father, but a companion of prostitutes squanders his wealth. It's 29 and 3, Proverbs 29 and 3. In other words, make your people proud. Get over this popular misguided notion of I'm going to do me. Time spent around pleasure seekers will leave you broke and broken. Six, the wise use their words wisely. The tongue of the wise adorns knowledge, but the mouth of the fool gushes folly. In other words, don't say dumb stuff. But you can't avoid saying dumb stuff if you don't have wisdom. Number seven, seek wise counsel. Surely you, you need, surely you need guidance to wage war and victory is won through many advisors. Proverbs 24, 6. It is good to learn from your mistakes, but some mistakes you cannot afford to make, and it is essential to learn from others. That's really that's a really good one. I'm going to read that again. It is good to learn from your mistakes, but some mistakes you cannot afford to make. It's essential to learn from others. Life has many battles, and you can only be successful by following the wise counsel of others. Plain and simple. Number eight, listen and learn. Real basic. The heart is discerning, the heart of the discerning acquires knowledge, for the ears of the wise seek it out. I think that pretty much speaks for itself. Listen and learn. Number nine, impartiality. To show partiality in judgment is not good. Prejudice, that's Proverbs 24, 23. Prejudices are stupid. Racism, sexism, all the other isms. Number 10. Respond well to instruction, correction, and rebuke. Proverbs 12, 15, the way of the way of fools seems right to them, but the wise listen to advice. But let me ask you this. Where does wisdom start? 
with the fear of God. What does a wise man do? Obeys God's commandments out of love. Does wisdom come from man? No, absolutely not. Though we think of ourselves as having wisdom and understanding and we do all of these great things, we don't create anything. As a matter of fact, here are some of the wisdom that has been uttered through the ages. I'll speak with computers. In 1949, Popular Mechanics, one of the most renowned magazines throughout the era of magazines, it was said that computers in the future may weigh no more, weigh may, or excuse me, may weigh more than 1.5 tons. Yeah, um, you know, my laptop is in front of, sitting in front of me, may weigh two pounds. Uh, let's see. I think there is a world market for maybe just five computers. That was said by Thomas Watson, chairman of IBM in 1943. There's no reason anyone would want a computer in their home. <laughs> Ken Olson, president and chairman and founder of Digital Equipment Corp in 1977. And this was like the one of the leaders at the forefront of making computers in the 70s. Check this one out. The telephone has too many shortcomings to be seriously considered a means of communication. The device is inherently of no value to us. <laughs> Yeah, Western Union Internal Memo in 1876. Check this out. The wireless music box has no imaginable commercial value. Who would pay for a message sent to nobody in particular? <laughs> this was uh, David Sarnoff's associates in response to his urgings for investments in the radio in the 1920s. Anyone got an iPod, iPod or a phone or some sort of music, digital music player? Yeah. Man's wisdom, right? Whereas the wise are discussed as having the qualities I spoke of above, the foolish are painted with a different brush. The fool has swift words, it is quick to anger. Whereas the wise stay cool. That's Proverbs 29 and 21. The wise stay cool under pressure. Why stay cool under pressure? And do not speak in haste. A wise man listens, then waits to respond. A fool repeats the same sinful mistakes, Proverbs 23 and 11. A wise man learns from his or her mistakes and does not repeat them, Proverbs 26 and 11. A fool is hot-headed, proud, and puffed up, Proverbs 14 16. A wise man never fears, excuse me, a wise man fears the Lord, is humble, and shuns evil. A wise man fears the Lord, is humble, and shuns evil. Proverbs 14, 16. A fool is stubborn, but the wise listen to advice. 12, 15. A fool spurns a parent's discipline, but a wisdom heeds, but a wise man heeds correction. 13, 15. A fool is quick to quarrel. A fool gets into arguments all the time. A wise person picks their points, 20 and 3. Fools show their annoyance at once, but the wise overlook insult, 12 and 16. A fool finds pleasure in wickedness, 10 and 23, but a wise man fears the Lord and repels such, 10 and 23. A fool lies about others and instigates troubles and gossip, 26, 17. A wise man uses his words to spread truth and love. 26, 17. A fool knows of Christ while a wise man knows Christ. Let me say that again. A fool knows of Christ. So, I mean, you'd be hard pressed to find someone who doesn't know of Christ, at least in our society, while a wise man knows Christ. Hmm. So what describes you, the fool or the wise man? Where does wisdom start? With fear of God. But what does a wise man do? Obeys God's commandments out of love. I'll tell you a story here. A man was sleeping at night in his home when suddenly his room was filled with a bright light and a savior appeared. The Lord told the man he had worked for him to do. He, the, man, the Lord told the man he had worked for him to do and showed him a large rock in front of a cabin. The Lord explained that the man was to push against the rock with all his might. This the man did day after day for many, many, many years. He toiled sun up, sun down with his shoulders 
set squarely against the cold, massive surface of the unmoving rock, pushing against it with all of his might, like trying to move him, literally trying to move him out. Each night, the man returned to his cabin, sore, worn out, feeling as that he spent his whole day in vain. Seeing that the man was showing signs of discouragement, the advisory decided to enter the picture by placing thoughts into the, the adversary. The adversary. Now, when I say the adversary, you know, that's that's a colloquialism or term used for his, the liar, the Satan, the devil. <laughs> uh, the adversary decided to enter the picture by placing thoughts into the man's weary mind. You've been pushing against the rock for a long time and he hasn't, it hasn't budged. Why kill yourself over this? You're never going to move it. That word, never. You're never going to move it. Thus, giving the man the impression that his task was impossible and that he was a failure. These thoughts discouraged and disheartened the man. Why kill myself over this, he thought. I'll just put my in my time, giving just the minimum effort, and that'll be good enough. And that's just what he planned to do until one day he decided to make it a matter of prayer and take his troubled thoughts to the Lord. And he said, Lord, I've labored long and hard and in your service, putting all my strength to do that which you've asked. Yet, after all this time, I ha it hasn't even budged. I have not budged this rock a half a millimeter. What's wrong? Why am I failing? The Lord responded compassionately. My friend, when I asked you to serve me, you accepted. I told you that your task was to push against the rock with all your strength, which you've done. Never once did I mention to you that I expected you to move it. Your task was simply to push. And now you come to me with your strength spent, thinking you failed. But is that really so? Look at yourself. Your arms are strong and muscular. Your back is sinew and mighty. Your hands are calloused from the constant pressure and your legs have become massive and hard. Through opposition, you've grown much and your ability now surpasses that which you used to have. Yet you haven't moved the rock. But your calling was to be obedient and to push and to exercise your faith and to trust in my wisdom. This you've done. I, my friend, will now move the rock. At times when we hear from God, we tend to use our own intellect to decipher what he wants. What God actually wants is simple obedience and faith in him. By all means, exercise the faith that moves mountains, but know that it's still God who moves the mountains. This is true wisdom. This man had a charge from God. He heeded his word and despite not quite understanding the reason for his mission, he knew what to do. However, the world got in his ear and Satan lied to him and told him he couldn't do what God had told him to do, just like Adam and Eve. He bought into it for a moment, but because he knew the Lord, he went to the Lord in prayer. God answered his prayer and not only confronted him, but he helped him to realize that though he had not achieved what he thought was a success, simply by trusting God and exercising faith in his wisdom, the man had now grown strong. What God helped him to realize with that was that what we toil at, God may easily conquer. Where does wisdom start? With the fear of God. The fear should motivate us to get to know him and to know him is to love him. So, and what does a wise man do? A wise man obeys God's commandments out of love. The better we know him, the greater we strive to do as he has commanded us to do, the greater we will reflect him. A wise man knows that wisdom starts with the Lord. It does not start with some textbook, a blog, an Instagram, a press conference, or a news report. A wise man understands the true source of wisdom and get rid of folly. Wise does not sound like fun, but a fool's fun is being bad. A wise man's fun is being wise. And remember, Solomon had more partying and merriment than 10 men could handle, 100 men could handle. A wise man goes to the Lord. A wise man listens to the Lord. A wise man obeys the Lord. 
if you are here this morning and you don't know the Lord, it would be wise to get to know him now. Those who hunger and thirst for God's wisdom for spiritual substance are invited to acquire it and benefit from it. Line upon line throughout the Bible, the message is clear. The message from God is clear. You must accept his invitation and leave the folly by the wayside. Lord Jesus Christ breathes forth the invitation. Will you not come to him that you might have life and have it more abundantly? From his own lips, you have committed, you have the command to come and receive the eternal life he offers. Where does wisdom start? With the fear of God. What does a wise man do? Obeys God's commands out of love. I pray that Father remove from me, from us, what does not reflect your character and place, replace it with yourself. May the world of Christ dwell in you richly with all wisdom. Thank you.